This is the true story of Captain Richard Phillips. It is the story of how he saved the lives of people on his ship from Somali pirates. How he had to face the entire situation when the pirates captured him and took him hostage. The story begins in Somalia, where a few people with guns come to the beach. These people tell others that this time they have to bring a big ship from the sea by looting it. In reality, all of them are sea pirates. Many people want to go with them because they are very poor and have very little money. They are very desperate. From there, two small boats and one big ship set sail toward the sea. In those boats, there are various sea pirates who observe the positions of different ships in the sea. They see that all the ships are close to each other, which means it is impossible to attack them. During this time, they spot a ship that is quite far from the rest of the ships. This ship is heading towards Mombasa. The pirates track the radio communication frequency of that ship, so they can listen to the conversation happening on board. They realize that this big ship will pass through their route. This is a cargo ship. The captain of this ship is named Richard Phillips. The captain knew that the route his ship was taking is very dangerous. There are pirates on this route. That's why the captain was already on alert. When Phillips looks through the binoculars towards the sea, he sees a fast approaching vessel at a distance. But at that time, those people are far away. But when he looks at the radar, he realizes that someone is tailing their ship. Then he tells his crew members to turn the ship to the left. The people who are tailing them also turn to the left. Phillips understands that these people are pirates who are trying to hijack the ship. Phillips informs UK Maritime Trade Operations in Dubai about it. The operator says that he has registered their complaint, and they should close all the doors of the ship. They might be fishermen. Phillips cuts the call, saying that they are not fishermen. Phillips looks through the binoculars again. Those people are now a mile away from his ship. Phillips sees that all those people have weapons. Phillips is now completely sure that those people are pirates. Phillips picks up the phone and tries to contact the police. He had tried to call the police before but couldn't get through. Phillips tells them on the phone that two boats are approaching them, and there are people on them, and they all have weapons. It is also possible that their bigger ship is also coming behind them. Phillips knows that all his conversations are being heard by the pirates. And the next moment, Phillips changes his voice and says that within the next five minutes, an army helicopter will reach here. In fact, Phillips had not been able to contact the police. He changes his voice and says about the army helicopter, so that the pirates can hear it and get scared and go back. That's what happens. One of the two boats goes back because those people don't want to risk their lives. There is also a big ship with them, which is an old man in it. He also gets scared and stops following them. But there is still one boat with four pirates, and they are still tailing the ship. Captain Phillips says that they will get stuck in the sea waves. They reduce the speed of their ship and keep turning it left and right repeatedly. As a result, big waves form, and due to these waves, the engine of their ship gets damaged. The ship of Captain Phillips has now moved away from them. At night, the entire crew of the ship sits together. They are discussing what they should do if the pirates return. Captain Phillips says that they will stop them just like they did today. One person says that our job is not to fight the pirates, but to take the ship from one place to another. Why don't we take the ship through another route, a route far away from the reach of these pirates? Besides, if we sail the ship at full speed, we can cover a distance of 100 to 150 miles in 8 hours. Captain Phillips explains to everyone that in the region of Africa where they are at the moment, there are separate groups of pirates who do this kind of work. We will have to face these pirates every 300 kilometers. That's why we should go towards our destination through the same route. The next day, those pirates start chasing them again. Captain Phillips notices them approaching and calls the maritime police. This time, he manages to contact the police. Captain Phillips informs the police that the pirates are attacking his ship. The police say that they will try to send help soon. Captain Phillips orders to turn on water jets around the ship. The high-pressure water makes it difficult for the pirates' boats to approach the ship. The pirates also attack them, but these people manage to fend off their attacks. Now all four pirates reach their ship. Captain Phillips realizes that his ship is in the hands of the pirates now. He tells all his workers to hide in the engine room. He said, I don't want the pirates to harm any of you. Until I say the password, no one should come out of the engine room. Now all four pirate boats reach them. They capture Captain Phillips and his two companions. The leader of the pirates is named Musay. He tells Captain Phillips that they don't intend to kill them, but to negotiate with them. Captain Phillips says that there is food, drink, and some documents on the ship. We have $30,000. Take this money and leave from here. Musay says, we are not beggars. Call all your companions up. Captain Phillips tells his companions over the phone to come up, but no one comes up. The reason is that he didn't say the password. Along with that, he also shuts down the ship. Musay asks, how did the ship shut down? 
Captain Phillips says that we were sailing the ship at high speed, and that's why it experienced a malfunction. The leader of the pirates announces on the phone that if everyone doesn't come up, they will kill one of them every minute. But despite that, no one comes up because Captain's order was that no one would come up until he says the password. Captain Phillips also agrees not to let Musse harm any of his crew members. Musse says that he wants to go down and search. In fact, he wants to bring all the crew members up with him. Captain Phillips says that it's alright, but there is an emergency light below. If that light goes out, we won't be able to see anything. We have to make sure that the light doesn't go out. While saying this, Captain presses the button on the walkie-talkie he is holding in his hand. This way, all the people hiding in the engine room hear everything. They understand that they have to turn off the emergency light, otherwise, those people will come here and find them. Now, one of them goes to turn off the generator, and the other goes to get water. Captain Phillips, Musse, and one of Musse's team members, all three starts descending. Captain Phillips is leading these people to a place where there are no hidden individuals. But Musse notices a map there that reveals the location of the engine room, which is at the front of the ship. He tells Phillips that he needs to go to the engine room first, because there is malfunction has happened. Phillips says that we need to get water first to drink because it will be very hot in the engine room. The three of them go to get water. There is also a person hiding there who had come earlier to get water. Philip sees him, he is hiding in the cold storage. It is dark in that place. When Musse is about to go inside with Phillips, he tells him that he is not wearing anything on his feet, which can cause him injuries. After that, the three individuals leave from there. Philip saves his companion. But he hears that the Somali pirates have not worn anything on their feet. And then he tells his companions who are hiding in the engine room, that the people coming towards them, have not worn anything on their feet. You should spread broken glass near the door. Their feet will get injured. Those people do the same. When Musse and his companion enter the engine room, Musse's companion gets injured due to the glass sticking to his feet. Now all three of them are inside the engine room, where everyone is hiding. At the same time, the light goes out there because the person who went outside has turned off the generator. Musse gets angry because the light goes out. He asks Phillips what is happening. Captain said that we should go back up, we cannot search for anyone in this darkness. Musse says that he will search for his crew. Musse's companion, whose foot is injured, is in a lot of pain. Musse tells Phillips to take his companions upstairs, and until then, he will search for his crew. Phillips and Musse's companion go upstairs. Musse starts searching for Phillips' crew in the engine room. Phillips' crew took control of Musse and made him their hostage. Phillips and Musse's companion reach the control room upstairs. In the next moment, the crew members in the engine room send a message to the control room via radio, that they have Musse with them, and if they want them to stay alive, they have to leave Captain and the rest of our crew alive. Captain Phillips talks to Musse through the radio. He tells him that I know you don't have your boat to go back. We can give you a lifeboat, and along with that, take the $30,000 we have. Let's end this story here. Musse agrees to Captain's words. Captain takes out $30,000, and also guides them about how to operate, they now close the door of the lifeboat and descend into the sea. Now these four individuals have kidnapped Captain Phillips. They are taking Captain with them. Captain's ship is also following them. The crew members don't want to lose Captain. This news also reaches the US Navy. And these people send their drones there. Their drones have cameras installed, which continuously keep an eye on this lifeboat. The lifeboat is now heading towards Somalia. Upon reaching there, they will demand more money from Captain Phillips' company for whom Phillips is working. Along with that, the four pirates start fighting among themselves. Contact is established with them from the control room of the US Navy ship. The Navy ship has also reached their lifeboat, which scares the four pirates. The Navy personnel say that they will let them go if they hand over Captain Phillips to them. Musse says they are not terrorists but ordinary fishermen. He does not want to leave Captain Phillips. He tells the Navy that they will release the captain when they receive $10 million from them. The Navy says it's not that simple and it will take time. Meanwhile, they want them to provide food and water. Musse agrees to their request because they don't have any supplies. After that, two small Navy boats reach them. The people on the boat say they want to see Captain Phillips first. They take the captain out. Captain Phillips asks them if his family knows where he is. The Navy personnel say yes, they are keeping them informed. Captain Phillips says they should know that he is sitting on seat number 15 in the lifeboat. In fact, this is an indication for the US Navy that the captain is sitting on seat number 15. When one of Musse's companions sees that Musse is keep talking to the Navy, he fires a shot from his gun near Captain's ear, and tells Musse to get inside the lifeboat. He tells Musse that there is no need to talk to them anymore. 
When the Navy hears the gunshot, they take their boats away from them. Then, again, the Navy contacts Musay. They want to know if Captain Phillips is okay. Captain Phillips says he is fine. It is now night, and soon these people will reach Somalia. If they reach Somalia, the US Navy won't be able to find Captain Phillips. Captain Phillips tells Musay that he needs to urinate. Musay allows him to go outside the lifeboat. A companion of Musay, the same person who had injured feet due to broken glass, also goes outside with Captain Phillips. Captain pushes him into the water and jumps in himself. He starts swimming towards the Navy ship. The Navy also realizes that two people have jumped into the water from the ship. But due to the darkness, they cannot confirm who they are. Before Captain Phillips can reach the Navy ship, Musay takes the lifeboat and reaches Captain Phillips, and then he brings him on board the lifeboat. In the next moment, two Navy ships reach their lifeboat and tie it with a rope, so that the lifeboat remains under their control. They also install a device on their boat so that whatever they say can be heard by the Navy. The Navy officers give Captain Phillips a dress and tell him to wear it and sit in his place. They take Musay with them and leave the area. After that, the lifeboat lit up with big lights, making them invisible to them. The Navy snipers try to target those three pirates in one go, but they can't aim at all of them at once. Now, with the help of the rope, they are pulling their lifeboat towards them. The pirates are not concerned because one person from their group is with the Navy. Along with this, their deal is also being finalized. Captain Phillips feels that he will not survive now because the tension is increasing in the lifeboat. Captain Phillips writes a letter to his family during this time. Meanwhile, one of Musay's companions notices this. Both of them start a fight, but soon Musay's companion gains control over Phillips again. They tie Captain Phillips' hands and blindfold him. Now, the pirates realize that they are being played. The most dangerous pirate among them says that he will shoot Captain Phillips. However, the other two pirates do not agree. Meanwhile, the snipers, who had targeted them, now aim at the two pirates. The Navy officers say to stop pulling their lifeboat. As they stop pulling the lifeboat, their ship jerks, causing the third pirate to be targeted by the snipers as well. The snipers shoot all three of them together. After that, Captain Phillips is rescued. Captain Phillips is still in deep shock, but his life has been saved. This is where the story ends. Musay, who is captured, receives a 33-year sentence. Musay is still in prison today. This is the true story of Captain Phillips, which took place in 2009.